Have I have a treat for you. The future is here. TJ Colazy. He is the founder and CEO of Life Brands. Welcome to the playbook. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. You know, this is about the playbook to success. And one of the things that I've realized about you is you and I are in the same business. And I know that you can scrape clean and scrub my past, but the business that we're truly in is empowering people with a playbook to success. And you not only empower them, but you help to protect them from unwanted and unfair evaluation for being human. Yes. And, you know, I've come from the sports agency world, ran the most notable sports agency, and it's so unfair when your brand is elevated, the microscope that's placed upon human nature. But now because of social media, a microscope is placed upon everyone for human nature uh, at any time. And it's so nice to know that you personally and Life Brand help to empower those people with a playbook to success to allow people to see us in the light that we should be seen in, a fair light, I call it. It's not a, a misrepresented light. It's just that you should not be judged for every single thing that you've done in your human past. And uh, when did you realize in your career that there could actually be a business to help people with their playbook to success? It, it was I was a longtime fitness industry executive for years with LA Fitness Sports Clubs, Crunch Fitness, it's when I was working at Crunch that I saw some of our hiring managers snooping through people's social media, like almost everybody does when they're hiring, and they would find one little thing, or there would be one post once they were working for us that would resurface and it would change everyone's opinion of this person. I'm like, wait, time out. This person's 28 years old. They posted a joke when they were 17 that maybe at the time was even socially acceptable. Things have changed. Or they make one mistake, they retweet one thing that maybe wasn't funny. They're still a good person. And you know, Dave, I, I think back, I'm 40 years old. Social media didn't exist when I was 18, 19, 20. And I jokingly tell people at the time, thank goodness it didn't. Me too. I can't imagine what I would have been This makes you feel better. I and, tell people. But I think we're pretty good people. I'm a good person. And I think that's the case with a lot of people. Everyone has a couple things. And look, they're normally not even like these horribly inappropriate things. Those right. people deserve to be called out. They're not illegal not things. Right. Let's just say illegal things, you right? Know, it's something that could be construed out of context or twisted a different way that could hurt their personal brand, their reputation, their family, the companies that they work for, and that shouldn't happen. There should be a way to help not only empower folks, but protect them and also protect the companies and brands that they work for. You know, entrepreneurs like me, Work our, I was about to just use, I don't okay. describe, work our asses off, yeah. sorry. I, I'm um, a Goya guy. I'll get uh, off your ass, guys. You know, so. We work our asses off and risk everything. You know, like I put every dollar my family has into this company. You know, my wife and I maxed out our credit cards, could barely feed our kids. Our parents had to help us out. I, I could lose all this because one employee of mine had a dumb tweet eight years ago and then people want to come after us for it. And I think people have a right to protect their companies, their brand, individuals, I think for the most part, there's a lot of really good people out there, but let's face it, kids say and do things that adults wouldn't do. I mean, a 16, 17 or 18 year old is probably gonna put things on social media or 10 years ago, people didn't realize how they stay around forever. So it's just a great way to help empower folks to really protect themselves and the companies that they work for. You know, it's so funny because uh, I ran Lee Steinberg and he's a genius, Lee, Lee. And a lot of times we would be threatened by the media yeah, or threatened by certain people. And we had an entire personal investigation section of, of employees or outsourced employees that, you know, these media guys that were holier than thou would take one of our athletes who was a young, affluent uh, person. And, you know, don't judge me for what I did when I was 18. I'm just telling you right now. There's no videos of it. There's no tweets of it because there's no videos or tweets yeah, available. Right. <laughs> but don't judge me for when I'm 18. And I yeah. won't judge you either. Right. But we would go and have a private investigator. Go ahead. If, if you're going to threaten us about, you know, our 22 or 24 or 26-year-old. We'll find what you got, too. We'll go look into your 22, 24, yeah. 6 and say, hey, do what you need to do. But we have a bigger reach than you. And, you know. We're going to make sure that in every single response to your <laughs> your accusations and your articles of human nature, that we're going to put your human nature up there, too. It was amazing how humble these people got all of a sudden. And I think, you know, it'd be interesting, uh, as you said, if there's more people like you, not only uh, that utilize the service to, to, to allow a fair opinion of us to, to develop, but also on the other to raise the awareness 
that, wait a second, you know, this isn't necessarily who we are. These are the lessons that we've learned. You know, I went bankrupt. I lost over $100 million. So usually the first thing I tell people that want to do business with me, hey, are you sure you want to do? And most people are like, that's why I want to do business with you. I can't imagine the lessons you've learned to right. get back to right. where you are. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so for you, you started in humble beginnings. I think you were even a custodian at LA Fitness or yeah, a, a I, kind of uh, entry level position at least, right? When I first started LA Fitness, I, I needed a job. I was out taking a run one day. I used to be in much better shape than I am now. <laughs> and I uh, saw that a local gym was hiring. The only thing they were hiring for was a janitor position. And I'm like, cool, I can clean equipment. I, you know, I was 20 years old. I can clean equipment, work out. Awesome, you know? Uh, quickly after that, actually one of the people that ran the company was at our club one day and saw me talking with some members. And uh, I thought I was in trouble. And he you know, pulled me aside. He's like, why don't you try doing sales? I'm like, I know nothing about <laughs> sales. Um, but, you know, worked my way up from a janitor to a salesperson to a... Um, you know, uh, assistant manager, general manager. And by the time I was 23, 24 years old, I was one of the district VPs running sales and marketing and always loved it. I always liked helping manage and empower other people. Um, that's something that I always liked when I worked at LA Fitness and at Crunch Fitness was not just being able to help my own career, but like I took great pride when someone that worked for me was able to buy that first car. Oh, I mean, yeah. you met one that's of the kids feeling, that right? worked for me out here earlier today. Nick, you know, I'll never forget when he bought his first car, he always wanted an Acura. It was like his dream. And I remember the day he got it. And now, all these years later, he's still working with me. I've seen him get married and have three kids. It's just amazing. By his house. <laughs> yeah. And now, same thing here at Life Brand. You know, we have, you know, I don't want to, we have an amazing group of people here that, um, you know, we empower to do their job. We hire really, really good people. They can get out of their way and let them do what they need to do. But it's really rewarding to see the folks here grow. You know, we have, we'll be at our chief operating officer's wedding next weekend. We have another person here getting married and they just bought a house. It's just really Really great seeing people grow, and uh, I'm glad I can hopefully some of what I learned over the years from mentors and people that I watch and follow to hopefully give some of that back. You know what's people. so funny is you guys deal with so many great celebrities, yeah, athletes, entertainers, billionaires, millionaires, entrepreneurs who you know want to utilize Life Brand in order to make sure that they get a fair representation of who they are, not judge or attack for things that we did. Like you said, that may have been socially acceptable or just a dumb statement that's taken out of context. Yeah. All these things can ruin really? your entire life investment. Yep. Someone who you know has earned, someone like you, a good person who's earned. But with that celebrity in mind, it seems to me as I learn about you that you're a celebrator. You're not a celebrity yourself. You're someone who elevates others to elevate themselves. You celebrate others. You get more joy out of your family, friends, associates, employees, success than you do your own. Where do you think that comes from? Because I think that's a tenant of all successful people is they care more about other people's successes than their own. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate you saying that and saying that. And um, my guess would be it has to come from my parents. Uh, you know, they were always about, you know, and I, and a crazy, an incredibly great mother and father, but would never want to take credit for everything. It's always about what other folks did. And I think also some of that comes from playing sports your whole life growing up. I've always put a huge emphasis on hiring people that have played sports growing up. It teaches you about teamwork. It teaches you how to be disciplined and coached, which is surprisingly hard to find people that can take coaching and constructive criticism. Right. Um, so I think definitely playing sports, but absolutely 100%. My parents, I mean, anything you could ever say to compliment them, they would always defer that to somebody else and genuinely like seeing other people succeed and do well. You know, I come from a family of academic shamers, right? It's doctor, lawyer, failure. Uh, education was always the way out when I grew up in Akron, Ohio, a place very similar to Westchester, Pennsylvania, yeah. right? It's just a, a, a different place, which is probably why LeBron James and Steph Curry were born in the same hospital as me. Just a different energy there. Uh, but to that end, you know, education has changed. And I love seeing entrepreneurs like yourself that were courageous enough. See, I had to take on two jobs because I wasn't courageous enough to tell my parents uh, or my mom especially that, you know, I wasn't going to use the formal education in what I was going to do for the rest of my life. And I knew it through college, through law school. I knew it and I was just jumping at the chance. You were courageous enough to say, hey, this isn't for me doesn't mean you're not educated. It just means that you didn't went to a formal academic Yeah, I, I like to think through my life experiences and being a self-learner reading podcasts. I'm just as educated as anybody out there, but or I more, did learn. Or more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I did learn a few weeks into actual college when I went to Penn State um, that it just, it wasn't for me. And I, I, 
stood up in the middle of class and I walked out. I was just like, I, I can't. <laughs> I love that. I, I was also that kid, though, that you put me in like a, a, a an accelerated class that I'm into. I'm into it. But if I'm not, and I, I didn't want to be slowed down. But one of the hardest days of my life was having to tell my father at the time. Who, well, at the time, he's always been my father. But back then, my father, <laughs> yeah. who, I mean, for years worked for the federal government, for the Department of Treasury, but um, was also a professor here at Westchester and at Gwynn University College. For me to have to tell my wow. father that taught college that I think I'm too smart for college and don't need to go to college. And, I mean, his... Courage. I don't remember the exact words he said, but basically, well, you better go prove me wrong and prove yourself right. And, uh, you know, I, there was a lot of... It took a while to get there, and I think, like you said earlier, I've certainly failed at things I've tried to do as an entrepreneur in the past. And I think those were some of the best learning life lessons I learned. And I've told people, I'm glad life brand happened now when I was 40, not when I was 25. I'm glad I failed at other things so that I don't fail at this one. Um, and it, that's something that really uh, has always stuck with me too. But the formal education just wasn't for me. But then there's other people, my brother's the polar opposite. My brother, too. you know, and he's probably gonna listen to this. You know, Dan, hey, uh, <laughs> you know, he doesn't want to go start a as a janitor, roll his sleeves up and have to work his way up. You know, he wants to go be, have that thing that says, hey, I'm smart. I went to four years at a really good school. And he has a great job. You know, we're completely different personalities. Um, but yeah, and I think that's okay. I think there's people that need school and it's great. I think there's others that they shouldn't be shamed into, you know, they're less for not going to school. Um, I think the trades are amazingly important too that don't get enough attention. And, yeah, uh, and I think there is great opportunities that exist in both. And especially now with entrepreneurship, where we have the freedom to work where we want, yeah. when we want, but yet get a salary, benefits, equity, uh, a little bit of a lottery ticket, and you don't have to have overhead employees, which obviously you understand uh, yeah. the un unteachable pressure uh, of making sure everybody else has their families fed and places to live. It's an extraordinary thing when you, it will keep you up at night. As it keeps you, me up at night now that it's not just my family that I have to worry about. It's 40 employees globally that are dependent on us. Investors' money, that's dependent on us. That's an unbelievable stress that you feel. Um, but that I feel confident having and that I know we're going to you know, do the right thing with it. Yeah. But uh, you're right. It's definitely, it's a new type of, I thought I was stressed just worrying about feeding my own kids. Now I'm worried about 40 people oh, feeding their kids, me. keeping well, a roof over their head. When you're emotionally attached and you get such great joy out of, you know, the cars and the houses and the lives that change, it also has the other side to it that it's a lot of pressure. Um, to that end, you have an entrepreneurial journey and experience and understanding how to grow and build and scale businesses are there certain uh, steps or strategies that you use uh, to scale uh, your business? Because you're doing such an exceptional job. I get to see so many businesses of scaling the <laughs> yeah. business into a position, a foundation that has secured your employees and your investors. And I see exponential growth in your future. Um, I think it starts with the other people you surround yourself with. And that's a couple different levels. The first and foremost immediately is finding those key couple people to work with you that believe in your passion and believe in your vision. You know, our chief operating officer, Gemma Barbaris, that you met earlier, she, uh, I had known her for about a year when I started this company and she stalked me for a job for a year. And she'll be the first to tell you that. I, love I mean, it. every week, when can I start? When can I get an offer? I'm like, Gemma, I would love to hire you, but we have like $6 in our bank account. I have no <laughs> money. Every dollar we have is going towards building the product. And finally, one day she came up to me and she was like, great news, I quit my job, I start Monday. And I'm like, Gemma, I still don't have any money to pay you. And she said, I don't care. I believe so much in what you're building. It'll work itself out. You'll pay me when you can pay me. And she did. She worked for about first 12 weeks before she ever got a paycheck. And uh, having people like that, that believe in what you're doing as much as you do and are willing to make the right sacrifices are definitely key one to trying to scale something. And then surrounding yourself with people outside of work. We've done some amazing sports partnerships with the Eagles, the Sixers, the Phillies, the Patriots, the Chargers, the Atlanta Braves, Texas Rangers. I want to make sure I get everyone that we're doing stuff with. <laughs> Especially and, the um, Chargers. You hear that, much? Look, those things aren't cheap to do. You know, to, to have a gate outside of Lincoln Financial Field costs a couple dollars. And, you know, from the outside, some people might say, man, that's an that's a expensive marketing spend. But we're surrounding ourselves with the right people. You know, when all of a sudden you're sitting there with, you know, Catherine Carlson, who's the chief revenue officer of the Eagles, you're learning from her. You're learning from the introductions that you make. You're around the other corporate partners of those teams. And everyone needs our technology. I can honestly say I think every organization should use and can use our technology. So to be around the biggest companies in the U.S. that are corporate partners of these teams, to have access to them that us little old life brands, we still are a little, 
you know, company, that little engine that could. Hopefully one day everyone knows who we are and they will one day. But right now, being around those right people helps. So I think the biggest thing to try to build anything but scale it is surrounding yourself with people that believe in you, whether it's your employees. When a professional sports organization believes in you, that helps give a little bit of clout behind what you're doing. When they're using your technology, that helps add some clout. So just surrounding yourself with the right people has always been my my biggest thing. So I can't do it alone. I never would be able to do it alone. Yeah, you're definitely a team player, taking that from the sport background that you come from. But even more importantly, it's interesting to me that uh, and why I love partnering with you. You know, I'm a huge fan of Light Brand, a huge fan of you as an entrepreneur is because my career is about empowering entrepreneurs, empowering people today, personal brands. I built some of the biggest brands in sports, you know, not just the players that Lee Steinberg worked with, like Warren Moon and Troy Aikman, but charities like St. Jude and Big Brothers Big Sisters. But even beyond that, you know, the Pro Football Hall of Fame, which was just like an orange juice squeezer, and now it's an entire entity. You know, branding these things, it now, you know, through guys like Gary Vaynerchuk and myself looking at, hey, TJ, you're a brand. And if your livelihood is going to be based on your brand when you apply to college, when you apply to your first job, when you're in, when you make it, whatever you're doing, if you just make it today, you better use life brand yeah. because it is unfair, unfortunately true, but unfair that we can take something from 35 years ago, a, a term that, you know, I won't use certain terms, but I do a lot of interviews and the executive vice president of YouTube, um, she has her brand is utilizing the word queer. Now, I don't understand what's right or what's wrong, and she told me it's whatever's right for you, but I can tell you that if you put into context someone calling someone that name in the wrong time zone, yep. <laughs> then all of a sudden, we need life brand. Yeah. And I promise you that she, as being, you know, with her life choices, a great person. was not trying to offend herself. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. I yeah, mean, yeah. it's so silly. So I, I, and I want to put it into context because you talk about life band being a small, humble per partner of all these huge brands. There's a reason that they're partnering with you beyond you partnering with them. Yeah. As much as you think, you know, that CEO of the Eagles and the Chargers vice presidents who love you, who, that's, you know, I have my office podcast studio in SoFi. So I know this brand, you know, they're learning more from you as well. And they think they're surrounding themselves with the right people. How important do you see the personal brand with 2 million podcasts that, and also your future celebrity possibility of anyone that has a heartbeat? I mean, look, everybody nowadays has a personal brand, whether you're a celebrity, whether you're an athlete, or you're just, you know, you work at an accounting firm down an the street. Applicant, yeah. Right? Like, think about it. Anyone that applies for anything, you now become a, a client of life brand. Yeah. And, and look, everyone has social media. And our whole thing is also not just, you know, helping people clean up those things, but how can we also educate them? You know, how can we work with, you know, we actually have a great... Um, it's called the Social Media Accountability and Awareness Certification. It's a, in the process of becoming nationally accredited where we're going to be teaching fifth and sixth graders how to use social media, not just what not to post, but actually how to strategically use it to build a strong brand. The high character stuff they should be posting, the family type stuff, community type stuff, so that they can have an advantage over their competition when they apply for that college, apply for that job. Um, but really everybody, I mean, obviously it's my company. I think everybody should use LifeBrand. Everybody should take their personal brand seriously because, look, people are looking at it. The first thing I do anytime I have a meeting with anybody, I go look at their social media because I'm going to learn about them. And also being you know, a salesman, I want to build rapport. So I want to see what I know about them and if there's areas I can build rapport. But I'm not looking at their LinkedIn because their LinkedIn is, for most people, the fake representation of who they are. Um, you know, It's their Facebook. Chris Rock used to do a stand-up about when people are dating, that first date is not really who the person is. It's a fake <laughs> yeah. representation of them. It's, you know, by the time you get that fourth, fifth, sixth date, the real person comes out. Well, like Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter is like that fourth, fifth, sixth real date. That's six months down the road. So people are looking at that. And people think in a business sense, they're only looking at, looking at your LinkedIn. They're foolish. And I hope they hear this and I hope they know to go do something about it and to take that brand seriously, not just for themselves, but for their company. And companies are starting to realize, you know, if I have 800 employees, those 800 employees' personal brands accumulatively represent my brand. So I should invest in those 800 brands so that those 800 personal brands are a better reflection of my company brand. 
companies are starting to realize that we have we just had a small health system that we signed on that's taking the money out of their marketing budget to pay for it not hr not legal so like this is a marketing thing if i can clean up the reputation and image of my employees and build a better persona of them online that's there for helping my company and helping market my company better because i know my folks are going to be checking in when they're at work they're going to be tagging things that we're doing I want to make sure they have a clean reputation while we do it. So companies are, I think, starting to come around and realize that. And we're happy to be there for them and help them when they realize that. I love that not only are you giving, you know, the tools to fish, but you're teaching them to fish, especially when it comes to personal brand. Because building a community is probably the most valuable thing you can do, small, medium, large business or personality. Yeah. The best thing you can do is build a community of like-minded like-hearted and like-handed people that are on the same frequency as I call it in branding yeah, yeah. Uh, as you are. And you and I are definitely on the same frequency. Yeah. You're an amazing entrepreneur. So I'm here with TJ Colazy. Do not let the name fool you. He's the CEO and founder <laughs> of Life Brand, an incredible entrepreneur and a new friend of mine and a soon to be long, long-term long friend of mine. Yes, we will be. Thank you for joining me, David Meltzer, here on Entrepreneurs, The Playbook.